Hello everybody, it's Ascendi Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Senjutsu, a tier 8 Russian medium. Now, I've been looking around a little bit trying to find tanks that I can compare this to, and the hull is exactly the same of the Type 59 along with the turret. So, we're not going to be using this in like full comparison, but this is just to give you an idea. If you guys played the Type 59, uh, Type 59 it sports 7 degrees of gun depression, but basically the Senjutsu is a lighter turret compared to the Type 59. So whenever we go over the armor viewer and everything else, we're going to be using the Type 59 to demonstrate how the armor works, except for the additional spaced armor that this tank has. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and let's dive into a little bit of the statistics here. We're looking at 201 standard pin, 330 heat penetration, and keep in mind, 330 heat penetration, this is in fact the best penetration inside tier 8 medium tanks, inside the tier 8 heavy category. This is the best penetration on any tier 8 premium in the game that's currently in the game that's not a tank destroyer. This tank has got some absolute girth whenever it comes down to penetration. Supporting a 320 alpha, a decent amount of hit points at 1350. This is a pretty average across the board for a lot of tanks inside this lineup. Detectability on the other hand, 370. Uh, whenever you're moving and then 346 whenever you're sitting still, that is not going to be, it, it's not the greatest. You can get it down to 283 um, compared to most. And even then you're still not really having a, a massively good concealed setup. Uh, I'm going to be going over both crews that I used inside this tank. And then I would say just take both crews and combine them to b gain the benefits from both parts uh, because this tank does have a couple things that's actually absolutely horrendous about it 55 top speed 23 reverse speed you have a 50 percent modifier for your silver and that's pretty much about it now before we start delving into all the statistics that's going on this you also have a flamethrower inside this tank and there's a couple of things that i want to mention about flamethrowers they are absolutely ridiculous whenever it comes down to how they work in game they are a little bit broken in my opinion and here's a little bit of an example of one so this is a little bit of a test against an open top tank currently inside this position no one's going to be able to pin me my armor is completely safe my top open is in the rear yet whenever the flamethrower hits me i lose everyone inside my tank my ammo rack's gone my optics are gone everything is destroyed um I don't know what was going through Wargaming's head whenever they thought flamethrowers should be um, affecting open top tanks more than any other tank in the game. While whenever you think about tier 10, there's currently only three tanks that come to mind that are open top tanks. You have the Grill, um, you have the Waffle E100, and you have the Object 263. Um, this is the second demonstration that we were doing on this tank. And as you can see, once again, everything is going down and it's just once again crew's dead everything's dead he's immediately reloaded and this is how it goes for all open top tanks in the game um in terms of how these tanks affect open top tanks it whenever it comes down to it there are let's say a total of 25 open top tanks compared to the 900 tanks or the 800 tanks or the 600 tanks that are currently in world war ii um i think it's a bit unbalanced that flamethrowers are capable of doing so much against a very small select amount of tanks inside of the match so kind of a bit <laughs> overwhelming <laughs> maybe not just a little bit ridiculous with how flamethrowers work against open tops uh, anyways, rate of fire, 5.8 rounds a minute, uh, giving this thing a 10.2 second base reload. Uh, that's not too bad. Module damage at 135, that is definitely 100 millimeter. Blast radius for your high explosives is 1.76 for any of those that, any of those of you that don't mind your blast radius. Uh, damage per minute, 1,882 base. Uh, penetration at 500 meters, you get 178 and no drop off on heat penetration. Uh, no matter what, AP and APC are the only ones that benefit, well, that have the uh, con of losing penetration over distance. 178 not exactly being the greatest, but then again, I can make 200 penetration work. 178 is not too bad whenever it comes down to 500 meter uh, combat. Then again, your heat rounds in this are going to be amazing. 
Now, uh, shell velocity, 1,070, 895, 895. So that's your AP, heat, and high explosive. Um, AP, heat, high explosive. There we go. Aim time at 2.1 seconds. Rounds inside the tanks for ammo capacity is 43. That's not too bad. Base accuracy of 0.37. Now, the base accuracy of this tank is not something I find to be a massive hindrance inside this tank. I don't think it's entirely broken or slows it down in any of that regard what does kill this tank on the other hand is accuracy during turret rotation 2.28 this is horrendous every single time i have pulled this tank out to do anything inside of it i have hit a wall back and forth the first couple of matches inside of it i was wondering what was going on i had a couple of issues because i just i could not hit my targets now inside this entire lineup they do this every single time which means that i have to spend more money in game i have to spend more silver i have to do extra steps just to be able to make sure that people see what they're doing because 90 percent of the time it makes no sense on why they don't have this inside the game. And this is where this tank starts to fall off just a tad bit. I removed my vertical stabilizers off my tank, so then this statistic is not affected in the slightest. Accuracy during movement, 3.12. That is absolutely insanely high you hit the throttle ever so slightly and your bloom is the size of the moon size of the sun you could probably fit the entire solar system inside your bloom for how much this thing blooms out now continuing onwards five degrees of gun depression a lot of people think five degrees is not exactly good five degrees is not bad it's all about map positioning and knowing where you're sitting and to gain an advantage that way 14.3 degrees of elevation so far i have not run into a problem with my depression or elevation inside this tank just depending on what positions you're taking and how you're going to be utilizing it turret armor on the other hand 200 millimeters 160 on the sides and then 65 on the rear of the turret you also have additional spaced armor on the rear of this turret that is 15 millimeters of additional spaced armor so with that you're going to be having it's going to be making it a little bit harder to go through. You could pop around and have some decent angles ricochets off this. I've had a couple that have brought this thing pretty far up, in my opinion. Now, the tank is sporting a 44 degrees per second turret rotation speed, along with a view range of 380 meters. Uh, for me, the view range, you're definitely going to be wanting to take optics, situational awareness, and a premium consumable. You can drop the premium consumable on this tank if you do not want to use one and use a fire extinguisher or anything else. There's no issue with that. Uh, but you just want to make sure that you're capable of maintaining that view range like with optics by itself, it's 435 meters. So you are 10 meters short of the cap out for view range. And you're going to be getting outspotted left and right without situational awareness, born leader or premium consumable inside this tank. And continue on your uh, engine horsepower, 680, 17.1 power to weight. Uh, I don't see a point in using a traction system or a powertrain on this tank. 55 top speed is good enough. You're better off using your equipment elsewhere, vertical stabilizers, optics, gun rammer, or trading out your gun rammer for concealment net. Uh, and then 12% fire chance. I don't see a point in taking a fire extinguisher because of that 12% fire chance. Along with that, your engine, it's not like it's poking out a whole lot. In the front, you do have your transmission. And then in the rear, you got your fuel tanks. Up in the front, you can still be setting fire with your fuel tanks in the front. And then engine in the back. So keep in mind, whenever you're playing in this, up in the front, if you're shooting it, uh, front, aim front and left to damage the engine and have a chance of breaking it. And final on the list is your tracks. Now, personally, during the time I've been playing this tank, um, I've had a couple of issues with just how fast this thing rotates. Um, it's been over angling on me, even though I just, I only want it to move like a quarter inch. The thing is extremely responsive with 50 degrees per second and a terrain resistance of 0.7. 0.8 for medium and 1.4 for soft this thing is highly mobile extremely good tracks and terrain resistance you are utilizing that power to weight the entire time highly mobile tank except for it's a little bit too mobile in my opinion because i put my heavy tank crew on this with uh off-road driving and oh my gosh 
has it been a pain in the butt for me to do anything other than rotate my tank in half a second? Then again, it makes it easy to keep track of light tanks and everything else. So there is that. Now, for crews, for equipment, and everything on this tank, the replays you're going to be seeing. The first one, you're going to be seeing Advanced Concealment, so we're going to go ahead and throw this on. Uh, I wish I could spend gold to remove that, but unfortunately, I cannot. We're going to be throwing on the STG here, my camo crew. Up to 283 for the uh, Still Concealment, and a Moving Concealment in the range of 292. So, the first replay that we're going to be looking at is going to be utilizing this crew which is my concealment crew for my russians um basically this is my concealment crew across the board for a lot of tanks that i do but this tank it kind of needs a special crew so i'll be redesigning one of these crews as soon as the uh, matches are both over and showing you the build that i would actually take on this tank to make it perform to its fullest so let's go ahead and delve into the replay it's going to be on highway and we're top tier inside this lineup so you know, like that 201 standard pin, you're going to be able to use that without much of an issue on this map. Then again, whenever I end up on highway, I like to play a little bit of a scout role. I like to get in close and try and provide as much assistance as I can in the front row and go after assist damage. If I have decent enough concealment, which 283, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. It's kind of in that perfect middle ground. It's enough to where you can get into position but it's not enough where you can passively scout you kind of got to be a little bit more of a proactive scouter than you are passive scouting depending on the bushes that you're going to be parking inside of so here you can see that we're already up to four spots 317 assist damage and that's just by simply driving here now bushes in front if they are solid you're going to be able to fire through them looking for a shell not able to find it on that seu 100 y those things have actually got a very nasty gun for what tier that they're located in. Now, the turret armor of this tank, the effective armor in the front of it, you're looking in the range of about 215 millimeters of effective armor at the thickest whenever you're not using any of your gun depression. The hatches, they're a little bit nerfed down compared to the Type 59. Uh, that they're at 150, you're sitting at 130, but then again, it's a weak spot, it's a hatch. Anything that's shooting there with standards between tier 6, well, maybe not tier 6, you're not going to be looking at a lot of penetration inside tier 6, but against tier 9s and tier 10s, your hatches and your turret armor are technically the same. So for me, I don't find much of an issue there. The 5 degrees of gun depression, I don't find it pulling against me a whole lot. Um, it's all about positioning. And that's where we're going to be ending off at. The 14 degrees of elevation, on the other hand, I have had a couple of issues where I can't back up enough to get my gun on target to where I have to pull forward a tad bit. But it's, once again, it's all about map positioning and knowing where you're, you're going to be wanting to sit. Inside this replay here, you're going to be noticing a lot of s shots that I take that I'm kind of just throwing them out to the wind. And this was the match that was actually immediately after... Um, the first video that I put on, out on this tank whenever uh, Chaos gifted me it, and thank you Chaos, this has actually become <laughs> a really fun tank to play and I've been enjoying it. Um, however, I am still a little bit just baffled at the fact that they gave a tier 8 premium 300 and 30 millimeters of penetration on a 100 millimeter in tier 8. That means this thing's gonna be able to hyper pin everything that it fires at and it, people have probably heard me say hyper pin before whenever i reference hyper pin it just means that it's abnormal penetration for that tier it's penetration that doesn't really require a whole lot of aiming or anything that unless it's auto ricochet anything else there we go another shell that flies out that just seems like it should have hit but due to the movement accuracy and the turret rotation accuracy combining the way that it is you find that it just it's awful but hyper pin is just whenever you have an obsessive amount of penetration on a tank and you're not going to have any issue going through a target vz44-1 i am so sorry and there we go we're going for a little bit of a snapshot and usually with these 100 millimeters they're a bit more snappy but this one by just everything it is not snappy it is struggling in every single way 
you are required to take vertical stabilizers on this tank. You are required to take snapshot. Run and gun, I don't see much of a, um, I don't see much of a requirement for run and gun on the, uh, Senjutsu. But I do see a little bit of a requirement for, uh, snapshot for turret rotation. So as you're standing still and you're taking shots, or whenever you're driving over a mound, snapshot actually affects your aim more than run and gun does whenever you're driving over a rock or anything else because it's affecting turret and gun rotation. Dragon, here we come. Come up. We fire perfectly into the back for 327, damaging his engine. And I do think that there was a couple of shots against the Dragon that just... Look at how far left that shell went. There is another. I'm aiming for the back right, and the shell flew straight into the back left of his tank. And just the gun handling on this inside this match. I was looking at it and immediately after this match I dropped um, camouflage and I went straight after vertical stabilizer to see if that would help it and in fact it did. So the next replay we're going to be showing that off. But inside this one I don't think I got to utilize the flamethrower a whole lot. Uh, here we go the M12. We're going to put a single round inside him. 10 uh, uh, decent ammunition loadout. It's not I, I feel like the amount of ammunition to get inside this at 43 allows you to take a decent amount of whatever it is that you're looking for in terms of ammunition, but you will find yourself running out just because 43 rounds at a 7.7 .7 second reload, if you end up in a really good firefight and you're capable of moving a lot and doing anything that you really need to do, you will find yourself running low on ammunition left and right. Here we go, M56 coming up. There we go, shell flew true, and artillery's back there. Ah, uh, what is the top armor of this tank? I actually did not look. You got 30 millimeters of top armor on the engine bay. Was that 30 millimeters on the end? That was 20 millimeters on the engine bay. So if a flamethrower hits you, that's going to hurt quite a bit. And here we go, gun is broken. But that's the flamethrower that's broken, not the main gun. And we hit the ammo rock that we damaged on the artillery. So one thing with flamethrowers that I've noticed is if you set somebody on fire, you're capable of hitting them until it says that they're ammo racked. And if you know where the ammo racks are located on tanks, you're going to be able to absolutely punish the utter crap out of people. And at this moment, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I am not happy that I ammo racked him because if he would have had his turret, I would have had more cover inside that scenario. <laughs> but that's a bit unfortunate for me. Pausing the replay because it came down to our two artilleries left, uh, just nuking the crap out of the last guy in the team. But I will give hands down to uh, Gruul over on the enemy team for his awesome performance taking second place instead of a loss and defeat. But we got a mastery badge, we got a scout medal, top gun, Pasuchis, patrol duty. Uh, we had a ammo rack inside that match as well up against the artillery. And a really decent match for this tank. I wouldn't say that this is a great example of the tank, but whenever it came down to concealment, this is actually a really good demonstration of how the concealment on this tanks work. And now for the second match inside of the Senjutsu, the equipment they're going to be using is Optics, uh, Advanced Loader, used to be called Gun Rammer, and Vertical Stabilizer, because I honestly feel like you need Vertical Stabilizer on this tank. Once we jump in and take a look at the uh, wrong button, uh, the module viewer here, and we go down to the accuracy, it's now 2.11, and rotation is 1.2, base accuracy of 0.3. In all honesty, base accuracy at 0.36 to, well actually, 0.37 to 0.32, it performs around the same. So if you're within that area, that's actually kind of the golden zone for accuracy. And by that point, it's actually turret rotation and movement that you want to keep your eyes on whenever it comes down to your accuracy on how you're handling it. And for the commander skills, here you go. If you want to pause this, be able to go over and get your hands on this. Uh, don't take off-road driving. Do not take off-road driving. <laughs> it makes this thing way too responsive. And clutch braking on this tank as well. You do not need it because it's just going to make this thing overperform in a lot of ways. For instance, this thing's rotation speed currently is 54.5 and then the turret rotation is 47.78 and for the next replay we're going to be playing a nominom a map that can be thrown in a dumpster fire and no one would question it now we're top tier once again 
uh, both the replays I'm showing off from top tier inside of. Against tier 10s, I was averaging in the range of 3,000 damage to 1,000 assist at times. I do not feel like against tier 10s, you're at much of a hindrance with your mobility and the way that the gun in this works, as long as you're using the accuracy build. But if you're going full concealment, Playing aggressive inside this tank is still doable with your 80 millimeters of side armor without much of an issue side scraping or getting in close to utilize that additional 15 millimeters of spaced armor on your front plate because against tier 10s I've bounced so far I, I've bounced a total of four roofless rounds off my top plate at a very strange angle. Uh, just because of that spaced armor, and then jumping inside of a private match to test out the armor, uh, and then test out the Type 59, or even like the, the 59 Patton, which has the same hull armor as this, which is 100mm, or the T-34-3. Now, there's very certain angles that this tank is capable of achieving because of that spaced armor compared to the alternate variants of this tank that have the same hull armor because of that additional spaced armor that is on the uh, frontal plate you're capable of actually almost gaining an additional 12 degrees of angle on that top plate just because of that spaced armor against AP and heat rounds. So against heat rounds, I've also had it absorb heat rounds as well on the front, but that is very rare for it to happen. So far, this match, we're already a minute and 40 seconds in. It's a very slow game, and the most I've been able to do so far is punish the light tank for 510 damage. But the M4A1 Rev, there we go, bouncing off the turret. Against heat rounds, the turret's going to be performing decent as long as they're not landing on the cheeks that are closer towards the gun mantle itself. And here we go. Really good gun handling, 294 damage. But that's with the vertical stabilizer and the heavy tank crew that I'm showing off inside this tank. And that is a heavy tank crew. This is not one of my medium tank crews. But uh, while this match is going on currently, I'll actually redesign a crew real quick just to be able to have you guys... So you can take this crew and try it out and see if it works for you. But up to 1,127 damage, 390 blocked. Honestly, I did not get a whole lot of blocked inside this tank. Because of the space armor, I had a match where I technically took a total of, what was it, 27 rounds. But only a small portion of them actually appeared um, as blocked. Like right there, that shot, I actually want to rewind a little bit. Alright, after going back and reviewing it, that actually did add to the block modifier. But every single once in a while, heat rounds that fire into that, if they get absorbed, um, it will not pop up on your block damage. Uh, same thing about AP rounds, if it hits, it's it's not going to have pop up on your block damage. Now, there is one downside to spaced armor, mechanically speaking. High explosives against armor at extreme angles um, are going to have a chance of being ricocheted or blocked entirely because... They explode and then they deal no damage. However, due to the frontal armor of this having spaced armor on it, high explosives, no matter what, will always prematurely explode on that spaced armor, which means you're not going to be able to have random block damage from high explosives because they're going to premature explode on the top of that uh, frontal plate with the additional spaced armor. That is one of the drawbacks of having spaced armor. It'll cause premature explosions with... Um, High explosives. And there we go, a little bit of damage straight into the gun mantle there. It's only 40 millimeters of side armor on the gun mantle. So if you can catch out this tank on the side of the gun, and it's pretty much the only shot that you have, you can penetrate the gun mantle at a side angle. Um, all the tanks with this turret design actually suffer from that, including the uh, T-54. And here we go, we're going to be putting one more into the T-3045. Nice, 323 damage. So far with the 2,442 damage dealt and 780 blocked. And here it is, a little bit of time. The aim time on this is really, really nice. Uh, I believe it was sitting at 2.1, is where we were resting at prior. And currently our aim time is resting at 1.93. That's actually very decent. Now the flamethrowers on these tanks, uh, as I've said, they're a little bit broken. Make sure that you reload before you switch back to your standard gun. If you're done firing your flamethrower, Always make sure that you tap that reload to get that gun back up and running the moment that you need to swap back and forth. Uh, we were having matches inside these tanks to where you would have the flamethrower equipped. You would circle a guy, lighting him up because he can't penetrate the front armor. And if you set them on fire, the enemy's crew is going to be entering um, a state of stress. 
And what happens inside that state is reload times are increased. It's comparable to the stun mechanic over on PC whenever your crew is on fire. And we're putting a... We're loaded with our standard, but we're going to load back in, take down the, uh, the HMH M51, and then flamethrower into the back of the Jagdpanzer, but unfortunately he died before we were capable of getting it into him. Now, the drawbacks of this tank, it's kind of strange to say, but I don't feel like there's a whole lot of drawbacks. If anything, if they were to buff the gun handling on this tank and move it up to tier 9 and increase its hit points, it would actually fit very well instead of tier 9 matchmaking as a, a tier 9 with the way that this thing moves and performs. And for me personally, I just wanted to set the M56 Scorpion on fire because I wanted to kill his entire crew. And you can immediately tell by the way his tank is moving, his entire crew is dead right then and there. And that was the only open top tank in this entire match, which is kind of where I'm going to get to again. Open top tanks should not be punished for being open top tanks. Because in a game that's competitive, that you're versing one another, it should only affect everyone the same. But it's not. It's always going against, and it's always causing issues. It's just... I don't know what was going through their head whenever they said, oh, open top tanks should take more damage. That's like the same logic of depending on how easy it is for the commander to come out of the tank should be based, should be how their view range works, which is the way that Wargaming did it um, 10 years ago. So they're pretty much applying the same logic that they used 10 years ago for how things should be affecting open top tanks and how it should be. Uh, in all honesty, if you were to change that mechanic and just completely remove it entirely for open top tanks, no one would complain. I wouldn't complain. I love my 263. I love my TVP. I love my open top tanks. But I hate it whenever I play my open top tanks and there's one flamethrower on the enemy team and he focuses me out because I'm an open top tank. It, it gives the people incentive to YOLO open top tanks because you're going to be able to punish the absolute crap out of them. And this match, uh, it, it's a decent match, 4,736. Actually, that's a very good match, but against tier 8s, I kind of feel like 4,700 damage whenever I'm top tier um, doesn't feel as good as it used to. And to explain that, it's like I love to go against tier 10s and show off the capabilities of tanks against tier 10s. All right, well, back in Garage, um, this is the crew. I just actually redid it. So you guys can take a look. This would actually be the skill loadout that I would take on this tank. And this would be the permanent loadout for it. And then if you wanted to, you could drop gun rammer for camouflage. That way you have the benefits of good gun handling at the sacrifice of your um, reload. But in all honesty, what is the reload without a gun rammer on this tank? 7.44 seconds. So if we were to take the gun rammer and drop it, uh, we're going to be looking in the range of 8 seconds, which is actually not too bad. 8.27 seconds. I mean, that's kind of on the verge of, you know, 360, where 360 alpha should be for their top out reloads, but uh, they are not there. They're actually worse than all 390 alpha guns in the game. Uh, <laughs> lots of fun. Anyways, Commander, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Silent Driving, Track Mechanic, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Snapshot, Deadeye, and Run and Gun. I am not using steady aim on this because your base accuracy, you do not need to worry about improving it. While the small percentage modifiers that you're going to be getting from run and gun and um, snapshot, snapshot being the highest effect, taking snapshot by itself over steady aim is going to be much more worth it because it's 12% rather than 10% to help decrease that turret rotation. Uh, but this would be the crew that I would run on this. Uh, in all honesty, I actually can't remember if accuracy affects your overall performance inside your tank. So 1.56 and then 2.11 for the accuracy and then during turret rotation. And then accuracy is at 0.34, which this is not bad. This is actually kind of in that golden zone for where you would actually want to have your uh, accuracy at. And I am spending a lot of silver inside this. Anyways, talking about the Senjutsu, would I recommend this tank? Yes. I would. This is actually becoming one of my more um, favorite tier 8s uh, inside the game just because of how the gun handles, how the mobility is, 
the penetration, the hyper pin that it has, the 330 heat pin, you're capable of going up against tier 10s, tier 9s, and absolutely overwhelming tier 8s based upon how you are playing inside this tank. You are capable of side scraping. You don't have haul down potential, but you do have haul down potential depending on where you are located inside the map. Five degrees has never been a hindrance on any tank, and this tank is probably a really good demonstration on that. Anyways, you guys, this tank has been an absolute blast for me to play. And Chaos, I'm going to say it again, thank you for gifting me this and the old Reliable. I'm probably going to be putting at least 100 matches inside my Senjutsu over the next couple of days because I'm just having a lot of fun playing inside this tank. Now, for the final thing that I wanted to say for the very end, Deadeye works on flamethrowers. 6% increased the chance of damage to enemy crew and modules with AP, APCR, and heat shells. Uh, thing is, this perk was made before flamethrowers were designed. And flamethrowers kind of seems like they're working off of the AP, APCR, or heat um, modifier for penetration. Because whenever I hit somebody with it, we tested this against... Um, 263 is the other day. This is a couple of days ago, but we had 15 of them lined up and we did this to 15 different tanks out of the 15 without Deadeye. We ammo wrecked one of them and had his top pop off once. Then against the other 15, six out of the 15 detonated the ammo rack with Deadeye equipped. So Deadeye, it seems that it's affecting flamethrowers, or I could be wrong and RNG is giving me the finger, um, but I'm not going to sit there and shoot tanks a hundred times to get an idea for a hundred percent estimate to give you guys like 20% 20, 20 of the time with this equipped compared to um, 7% with the other one equipped. Anyways, you guys, this has been fun. Thank you for watching. If you made it to the end, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and seriously, leave a comment down below. Because I talked about what was the most metal instrument. It's a triangle. And a cowbell. For the drummer. You get them those and you they manage to add those in. The sounds are amazing. Anyways, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is you're catching this. And I'll catch you in the next one.